back of the Urgot and Scion nerfs. Now the Galio going to follow as well as one of these kind of top tier support options, but not seeing the Jarvan, interestingly enough. Not seeing so, something like the Thresh prioritized as highly. The Galio, the Rise, the first picks here. So I think the Rise is naturally a flex pick. Remember, it can be moved up towards top and mid. Uh, I am surprised that it's being picked so early in the draft, though. Uh, let's not forget the Cassio, a very good pick into the Rise. Uh, which to me suggests that uh, right now they're holding it as an answer to the potential top lane against Cabo. I do think Ryze can do pretty well into the Lissandra though, but <laughs> Vitality saying, you know what, we have lots of utility, I... we have damage, we have engage. Vitality's got very well rounded right now. And I love this video it's because you saw him hover the Echo. You saw him hover the Katarina, signature Jazuke champions, and then almost like begrudgingly, he <laughs> locks in Lissandra. He's like, I just want to let you know that these are the champions. I will play this for the team, but I, I'm coming for you. I will look for those big outplays, even if it is a champ like Lissandra. G2, unsurprisingly, though, will lock in the Kalista for themselves. And so, fun story about that. I don't know if you remember a long time ago where Perks had a Kalista game, and it was like one of his worst performing champions Ooh. ever. It was like, it was a real throwback, but there was a time where he definitely played Kalista. I think he role swapped with someone, uh, and I think it was like a four fun game where the game didn't really mean that much. And he was horrendous at the champion, like truly awful. Um, so the fact that he's now picking it up, we'll see if all of his practice in bot lane <laughs> has helped him refine his uh, Kalista as he goes up against Attila's Lucian. Oh gosh. The throwbacks to the troll games of G2 past. Of course, we'll have the opportunity to uh, experiment next week if they are able to find a win here, but it will require a win against one of their biggest contenders in Vitality. Once again, taking away some of these blind pickable mid laners like the Syndra. Now, Alistair and Braum banned on the opposite side as no support has been yet shown by the side of Vitality. We'll see if they have any creative picks up their sleeves. Oh, they have to. They have to have some I mean, Thresh picks. is available, so I feel like Gragas. Ooh, Gragas is a hype. And again, there is, a, there is a pick that I have seen floating around. Um, so I'm curious, if it comes up, I can talk a little bit more about it, but there are some answers that you can throw against the Galio. Uh, and it, I, I don't think Thresh is the best one, because I think at level three, there's a real risk of you getting collapsed upon. Um, but we'll see. Right now, the priority pick is for G2. I would like to see their jungler locked in now. They could go for... A Rek'Sai, I think, would work very nicely, provide that early game impact. I think it's a very Yanko-style champion. Um, and I think that he can have a lot of success on it. Instead, they're going to opt to go for the Ooh. Lee Sin here, though. Interesting. That's interesting. Doesn't... For a long time, like... Rek'Sai was considered the counter to Lee Sin as well, so it does feel a little bit odd, but of course, this is a very new Rek'Sai. A lot of changes have come since we've seen that matchup. So, to me, this implies that uh, they're expecting the Jarvan to go into the jungle. Lee Sin typically does well in terms of 2v2 and early skirmishing against the champion. Uh, but with so much mobility on the side of Vitality, uh, it surprises me. They would look to prioritize this Lee Sin. I feel like that the Rek'Sai would have been stronger, but clearly G2 have different priorities. Uh, meanwhile, for Vitality, they're going to shift the Jarvan up towards the top lane. Uh, they're going to assume that it's just going to go blind because the Rise should go mid into the Lissandra. And this means the Vitality do have uh, the Rek'Sai, which will once again go on into Mowgli's hands. And when we saw him play it yesterday, or last week even, uh, a lot of focus went up towards the top side. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that once again. And look, if there's a Jarvan in the top lane, you have a Rek'Sai in the jungle, that setup is so easy. Flag and drag into the fall of Naka from Rek'Sai. Very simple gank pathing there, but it's going to be the Trundle Ooh. Now coming out. That's really cool. Uh, I like that a lot. All right, I'll talk you... about that in a little bit. I will talk about it in a little okay, bit. Okay, I was going to, but I'll wait. I will save it for you. Let's let's see what G2 lock in and round out their composition with. Uh, what we need to highlight from Vitality is that they have a lot of engage. They have pretty good early game. And we're going to get the Camille for Wonder in the top lane. Wow. I definitely was not expecting that. And of course, you have the ability to just blank the Cataclysm as it's thrown out with your own ultimate, the Hextech ultimatum. So, some interesting interactions there. Jack Troll looks like he is committing fully to the Trundle support on the bottom side of the map. I was for That's about two seconds. Support. I was for two seconds considering maybe Jarvan support with the Airy. We saw it that one time in LCK. We always like to bring up with the AP, but not going to opt for that one. So, Lucian. Trundle, bottom side of the map, up against Callista Galio. If you yeah. shown me to this, shown this to me uh, six months ago, 
I would have assumed we were in, I don't know, mid-gold ELO. Now it's obviously the top of the table, so I'm excited to see what these champions look like in the hands of professionals. Galley, we've got a little bit of a hint of in the recent weeks, but we'll, we'll talk a lot more about it once we actually get into the game, Dracos, because uh, the, there's some cool stuff that I want to uh, talk about. But Trundle, I think, can be a very good matchup to Galio. I was very much expecting Vitality to have something prepared. And Wonder, going back to one of his staple champions in Camille, it was something that he found a lot of success with when the champion first joined the league. Uh, and I'm very excited to see him going up against Camo Shard today. First versus second, Dracos. A lot on the line for both these teams today. Absolutely remember. Vitality trying to secure that spot in the top two. That is an automatic path to Rotterdam. That is a free loss in a best of five. You can keep your dreams alive in that pseudo double elimination. And for G2, already locked that top two. They're looking to lock number one right here with two games to spare. A ton on the line in this top of the table matchup. And Vettius, as we get in the game, Crowd ready. Where are we going to look? Because there's so many spots on the map. Anytime you talk about these two teams going toe to toe, people are dying in lane. <laughs> <Medias>. <laughs> this true. is not a game of slow, controlled macro. This is not an origin game. This is going to be all about big individual moments, these 2v2s, these skirmishes, where the junglers go. Well, let's where get into it quick then. Let's talk about the bot lane, right? Because uh, Trundle into Galio. Some people are probably going to be a little bit surprised. Let's talk a little bit about it. The thing about Galio is he's very lane dominant. He is at his strongest at around level 3, especially when you pair it up with something like a Kalista. You have a lot of kill pressure. Uh, as an answer to that, we have a pause. We have a pause. The pause has come out from Jizuke. We wanted to see blood. We wanted to see action. We're going to be delayed for a little bit. Once we have more information, we will share it. Um, but the thing about Trundle is, every time you try to engage on the Galio, the pillar will come up behind him. Not only will that separate the Callista from the Galio, but it actually makes it really difficult for the Galio to then get out of that situation. The moment he's committed, he's pretty much stuck with you. And the fun thing about Trundle is he's very good at gluing to you, and when you pair that up with a Lucian, you can just melt through that Galio very, very quickly. So it's effectively a counter tool to the strong lane dominant style that Galio likes to be. On top of that, remember, you can steal away his resistances with the ultimate once you get to that point. Uh, and you can make him a very squishy front line, which really G2 is very much lacking with their composition. So uh, I'd like the pick a lot. I think that it can do very well in lane. And I'm looking forward to seeing how Vitality can do in this 2v2 set. And also the setup in Lincoln team fights. The pillar is just such a huge disruption tool for two champions like Ryze, uh, you know, or Ryze who often will struggle to move around those team fights if there's a pillar in the middle. And Callista, who, if you use it to interrupt some of those jumps, makes it so hard for her to position well in the face of a lot of champions that want to dive, honestly, right onto, onto Perks' face. We have the Rek'Sai, we have the Jarvan, we have the Lissandra as well. And it's going to be a difficult game to play for some of the squishier members here, unless they can find an early game lead. Now, it is going to be the pillar start already revealed for Dractral. Of course, important to note that the Aftershock is procced by that pillar as long as he hits an enemy champion. Yeah, good note there, Dracos. And so we talked a decent amount about the bot side of the map. We want to flip our attention up towards the top side. Cabochard on this Jarvan, we've been seeing a lot in the current meta, against Camille. Uh, she was nerfed not too long ago. One of the big nerfs was that her E no longer stuns monsters, which means that jungling with her became difficult. Um, and she kind of just fell out of favor. But what we've noticed with the top lane meta is that with the removal of Aatrox and Urgot, uh, new things have come into fruition. So the safe blight will hang on. Junglers. Has the health advantage here. Mowgli trying to body block the buffs. He does miss the Sonic Wave there. The Nakam now coming out. The Smite to try to heal up. Jizuke is on the way. The rest of the team is here. Vitality need to be careful, but Mowgli will make it out to safety. Confident play coming in from Yankos, and it pays off in the end as the flash is burned. So Mowgli wasn't expecting that. Yankos went immediately from red into the bot Scuttle Crab. Wanted to secure that vision for his uh, mid lane and bot lane. Definitely going to put Mowgli behind. Without that flash, it makes those early ganks that much harder for him. So we'll see where he looks to, but uh, where he looks to path. But surprisingly, or unsurprisingly rather, he started bot, and he's already making his way up towards the top side of the map. So very classic Mowgli style. He wants to try and get Kabashard ahead, mm -hmm. uh, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him try and set up a gank there in the near future. And another good ward does spot him out. So while they may have already assumed that he would be on the top side, they now have a little bit more information, knowing that he's finishing the scuttle. Can wait to see where he goes. Still, of course, the level two for the Rexile a little behind schedule, but the Knockwinter Tower, Wonder. 
Cabo is going to commit to the flash here. The slowdown coming in. So he's going to get the auto flash forward. Not going to take the slow. Wonder flash back and drag out. Here it goes. Be first blood for Cabo. Huge misplay from Wonder to get caught up under the tower and just beautifully played by the Jarvan on the side of Vitality. And G2, they had the counter pick. They went for the Camille, knowing that in lane it should have the advantage and it will outscale later on. But if you're going to make those greedy plays, you're going to get punished. Cabo Shard solidifying himself as one of, if not the best top laner we have in Europe. Definitely a strong opening statement. Now Mowgli's comes gonna Mowgli. look, come up. There's no flash available on anyone He's in dead. this exchange. Wonder now moving forward though. He doesn't expect Mowgli to be here. Mowgli moving in. That's the chain CC now knocked up twice. Wonder running for his life. They've empowered. Bite comes in for Rek'Sai. It's just too much damage. Hey, comes Runder. in. Oh, oh He's gonna get out. Well played by Yankos to be where his team needed him. The hookshot wall dive just coming up in time. The Stop. passive shield coming out from Wonder's Camille as well to mitigate some of that burst damage. And the level onto the Camille as well will certainly help. Beautiful stuff from both teams. But as Wonder, you've got to expect this top lane gank from Mowgli. He does it almost every single game. He tries so hard to get Kabashad ahead. And the fact that he didn't respect it almost cost him so much. Fortunately for him, he's able to clear those waves out. He's sitting at oh, a healthy man. CS advantage. Inverius, just two patches ago, nothing happened in the top lane. And now everything is happening in the top lane, but the bot lane is where we have to keep our eyes jacked on these flashes. Safety, ignite, and flash exchange there. Now looking for the follow-up onto Wonder. Wonder, one more out of Juzuke should be able to take these burning down. The corrupting potion. Cabo Shard still alive. Yanko's now in trouble. CC coming through. Will the Camille no, not hit him well. in the end? Stepping forward. Ooh, good sidestep from Yankos. Looks like he should get taken down. Your corrupting potion. That's gonna be enough. Double kill going in for Juzuki. Vitality are destroying this early game. Vettius, so many kills are going in their favor. Yeah, and they should have seen Jazuke roam towards the top side as well. Overconfidence has been something that we talk a lot about with regards to G2. And Yankos on Wonder, they overstayed their welcome. Jazuke now sitting at 2 0 0, five minutes into the game. And Mowgli, he's not slowing down. Now moving to the bottom side, no mana and perks for Mickey X's pool. Mickey now going to try to run for his life. The heel has come down. Now moving forward, he got the knockup, but that's still the kill. The Rex side does so much damage in this early game. And Vitality is just steamrolling through G2. They built up such a huge early lead. And let's have a look at this top lane play. So they actually have no vision of the river, but Lissandra is missing. They think that even in a two versus two, they can come out ahead because the Lee Sin is there. But Cabo Shard, he just sidesteps a lot of the damage. You could also make the argument that Yankos misses his Q. Regardless, Jizuke is there for the cleanup and vitality of finding kills all across the board. G2 are continuing to blunder. Invedius, five minutes into the game, we already almost have that 2k gold lead 1.5. It's be hard to make it any more explosive. And the bot lane, while it was winning in CS moments ago after that play, Attila playing a lot more confidently. Everything going right for Vitality. Cabo as well with the level advantage. Things just keep getting better for this team. And if you're G2 now, what is what is your course of play here? Because you've tried to respond with Yankos making these plays of his own. I guess you can just try again. You're trying again. You've got to try and get Wonder ahead. Cabo Shard, now level six, has the flag Sandra's here too, though. Suddenly Yankos realizes he's been off more than he can chew. The point and the click, the CC, it's too much. Cabo gets another kill. And G2, they're being read like a book right now. Vitality are there to respond to every single play that they make. 2,000 gold is the advantage of Vitality have built up. And G2, the team that was dominant for the first half of the split. They lost three games. The argument could be made that they just played overconfident. If they cleaned up their play, they'd be able to challenge and still sit atop Europe. But Vitality demonstrating that, you know what, they can be matched. They can be outpaced in the early game. And G2, perhaps not as hot as they once were. And there's so many games, Vettius, where Cabo builds advantages for himself. But this game, after that first kill, everyone on Vitality has seen the path to victory. And it begins and ends now with Cabo Char 202. Yes, he only has 40 CS to his name, but a 450 gold bounty tells you the story of this top lane. And look, Jarvan, when he's behind, can have some value. You have some CC, you have a Cataclysm there. Camille is a walking alt and stun bot, and that is it when this champion is behind. She's a duelist, man. Her whole role and responsibility is to outduel you, and right now she's sitting at two pointy swords versus the cleaver. No, I say cleaver. The Tiamat. It's called Tiamat. It cleaves, but though, it cleaves. Which is weird. The black cleaver <laughs> doesn't cleave, but the... <laughs> it's... Anyway. Yeah, League of Legends, guys. Tiamat um, is such a big pickup for Jarvan. It gives you so much wave clear. It makes it so much harder for Wonder to be able to trade and Cabo Shard isn't even pushing the wave in. He's down in no, CS, he but he doesn't care. He says, Yankos, come up and come up and help your top laner break this freeze, bud. I, I dare you. Give me the 2v1.
Vitality looking so good. Now, the, the thing for Vitality is that while Jizuka has been roaming around the map, Caps has been steadily farming. You've got to remember, in a side lane, he can still be relevant on this rise. And the bot lane has actually gone pretty well for G2. Even though they did lose uh, their support in an early gank, they still have very easy setup and for ganks later on. big potential here. The ulti's already come out from the trundle. They're going to look to set their sights on Jack Troll. Kick back under the tower, but he's going to be body blocked there by Mickey X and that CC. Can they kill Jack Troll again? Goes desperate for it. He's not going to be able to find it now. has to back away. Mowgli, ready to go oh into the moment. Not gonna take it. The second time now, Yankos attempts a gank and Vitality walk away with a sliver of HP. The stats the Jack draws stole. I'm not oh, sure who he stole them from, but definitely helped out. He walks away with his life. Now it is Vitality that are looking to siege onto this tower. Low health falls across the board for G2. And a play is being happening topside right now. Meanwhile, we're going to have to keep our eyes on both, though. Mickey now going to be in trouble. Looks like they're going to look for more. Attila's going to start to try to farm these ones up. Rek'Sai goes in and now comes out. It will be the kill traded back, but the shutdown comes in on the top side as well. Wonder now running for his life as Jizuke was taken out. Caps looking to bring up the kill. The sidestep here on the flag and drag, but still Kyle managed to take him down. Caps now looking for the play. Blue buff is there. Level 8 Cavill Shard stepping forward. Conqueror fully stacked, but I don't think it's going to be enough. The sustained damage from Caps is too much. He just looks to clear the wave and G2 just like that are right back with some kills. But it doesn't matter Dracos because Vitality are just snowballing this game right now. Two kills are in the back pocket of Attila. He's got himself a 500 gold bounty after that dive in the bot lane so went so heavily in the favor of Vitality. So this is where the play starts. You can see the ultimate comes out from uh, Jack Troll. Stealing away the stats from actually Callista in this situation. Not that much value but Jack Troll proving how tanky this trundle is regardless in the early game. Not quite enough damage. And he ends up walking away with his life. Now Mowgli heading up back towards the top side. There's no laner there yet, Mowgli. You've got to wait. Clear out your jungle, then head up towards top side. <laughs> and Vettius, I, you know, when I look at what's going wrong for G2, well, that fantastic ward there on the top side will probably be there for at least another 10 minutes. That's just um, messing up, man. A lot of small mechanical misplays. We saw the missed Sonic Wave on Yankos' very clever early jungle pathing. We saw the missed Sonic Wave on the top side as well. And in that last fight, we saw Lee Sin kick into Galio Taunt, denying the extra range on the true. knockback from the Lee Sin very, very kick. True. And those three plays go differently. This is a completely different game. Those Sonic Waves connects. We're looking at a 2-0 Yankos Could instead be. of a 0-3 Yankos. Could very well be Dracos. And this is the thing. Game of Inches is League of Legends. And right now, this game means so much for both these teams. Vitality sitting at 10 and 5, G2 sitting at 12 and 3. G2 could lock a spot in first place by getting this win. No team could catch them up, but Vitality, they can keep the dream of securing first place at the end of the regular season alive. Last split, they finished in second. I believe it was behind Fnatic, and then they ended up being forced into the third place match. Uh, where they ended up beating Misfits. Did allow them to qualify for Worlds, but they said at the beginning of the year they were going to be better. I believe it was Yamato, Attila. In fact, the entire squad said there's no way that we're not in this Splits final. And for a while, it didn't look great, Bettius. I'll be honest, there were a lot of games where we were wondering, is this team going to be anything different from the last editions of Vitality, where they have these really great, really explosive games, and these ones that are a struggle to watch sometimes, but it has been different. They have been getting better, and Shizuke now has to be careful, because while the rest of the map is definitely doing fantastically. Caps is still a big threat. Jack Troll, though, here to follow up, and already we're seeing the Herald oh, being look used. Look at this. Beautiful stuff from Vitality. They pushed out bot, they brought Cabo Shard down. All five members are mid with the Rift Herald, and there's nothing that G2 can do about it. That tower is going to go down. First of the game for Vitality. And Benius. We have watched two incredibly one-sided early games where massive gold leads have been built, and we thought, hey, this game's going to be different. These two teams, they're going to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe. and maybe if you were a G2 fan, you thought, ah, no, 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 G2 are going to be the team to find that massive early game gold lead. But Vitality not going to accept that version of the script, looking to rewrite it right here with a fantastic lead, a massive lead, 3K up, 12 minutes into the game, already a tower down. You know, and you can make the argument, right? Sure, G2, they've locked top two. Maybe, maybe they don't care about first place. Maybe they want to try new strategies. Maybe they want to take more gambles. But regardless of what their mentality is, they are getting outplayed individually. One of the things that we said throughout the entirety of the split was that G2 cannot be matched on an individual level. Yet over the last few weeks, teams have been saying no to that. They have caught up to G2. They can challenge the best players in our league and say that, you know what? First place has not been decided just yet. And it's a difficult road for G2. People start to lose faith. It was kind of unquestioned, I think, for the first five weeks. Oh, this team, we're looking at Griffin. Yep. We're not looking at anybody else. That was yep. the way it was. And then as they started to fall, people were ready to watch them do it. 
Maybe overconfident themselves, but Caps now stepping forward. Still not afraid, despite the deficit his team has been put in. Maybe that's a good thing for the team at this stage. They just good threaten damage. on Jizuke, and obviously in the 1v1, Ryze is a much stronger champion overall. They're trying to break down these towers in the mid lane, get a little bit more gold. It does mean that they're going to lose one on the bottom side, and Attila is just going to get stronger and stronger. 2-0-1, 10 CS lead, and a solo tower plate to follow two up. Two towers down before the plates drop. That is massive for Vitality. I gotta have a look at how much gold this Lucian is on right now. 6.3k, a whole 1k up on his counterpart. Same for the top lane. Attila and Cabochard coming up clutch right now. Yankos failed to have any kind of early game impact on this Lee Sin so far. And now next steps is kind of what we're looking at for both these teams. And G2, they kind of want to split the mat up. They want to try and have Caps it off on the side lane, use the fact that he's had a healthy laning phase to try and hold Cabochard, not being too much of a terror. And the fact that Perks has been doing pretty well on this Callista, even matching uh, the Blade of the Ruin King, is still a positive. But G2 want to avoid fighting at all costs, whereas Vitality want to force G2 to group. They are so much stronger right now, and if they can force these 4v4, 5v5s, they're going to come out on top. Invedius now, I think we look at some items on G2, like what's going to be the next kind of big thing that's important to come in. Of course, we see Cobb on the top side, probably a Black Cleaver going to shine through for him. Interestingly, though, I want to shift attention to the itemization of Attila. So we have Pickaxe, we have Caulfield's Warhammer, and this to me feels like he's feeling so confident in his lead that we could see something as bold as, I don't know, Death Stance, more Lifesteal, a lot of champions that want to dive onto him. Could see something new, something unique, because we're not seeing the Black Cleaver Rush that is so sec often second in the That's, back evolution. I'm trying to recall the build path right now for Essence Reaver. You still build BF Sword with that, right? I think it's BF Coffee. That's what I thought. So I wonder if he just decided to go for uh, the pickaxe because he's going to use it later for maybe Fair. an Infinity Edge third or uh, maybe even build it for Last Whisper if he feels inclined. I, don't, I think it'd be very early to do that. But to me, uh, we've seen a decent number of uh, Essence Reaver second. So it wouldn't surprise me if he heads in that direction. Then you have the, the sliding guide, Lucian, the guy that's always, he has so much extra mobility once he uses that ultimate as well. Um, you also have the Luden's Echo rush for Jizuke, and you can already see with the uh, tone being complete, he's going to get that Zonia second. We don't have time for that, because Wanda... Ooh, good power! Now moving back, Wanda has to run for his life, but I think that's going to be all they wrote. Nope, now pulling back. Does use the ultimate to try to make it away. Mowgli now could be in trouble as Caps will look to chase him down. Ulti has already been used. The flash forward Attila now here off to the side. He is going to try to delete through Caps' health bar. Coling comes out, making it a block a little bit here. Have to be careful though, Jizuke is now coming in. Locked up under tower, Mickey running for his life. The taunt does connect, Attila cleanses, but it might be a little bit late. He's still alive, looking for the Bright Seeker. All are gonna be able to take him down in the end, and Jizuke will find that kill. Yanko's trying to get something back in the mid lane. Cobble ready for the chase, though does not find the knockup. Gets kicked right back over the wall. Yanko says, no thank you, sir. But let's just appreciate 15 minutes into the game, Vitality a diving G2 underneath their tier three towers. This team is so confident against the number one team in our league right now and they are making them look weak but it is not the cleanest game towers are being traded back pressure is being traded back g2 are still finding some things as perks is able to break that bottom tower and confirm now bettius the essence reaver of course does build out of pickaxe there we go Crit itemization, man. How many times we got For some reason, I thought I was convinced there was a BF sword in no, there. No, it was BF swords, Caulfield, Sapphire, Crystal, and they changed it to Pickaxe, Caulfield's ah, cloak of uh, agility. Yeah, but we were still right on the money. Essence Reaver was the focus for him, uh, and now he's going to be working. And now he's very strong at these two items. Looking I want to very, see very confident. both the slide and the glide. <laughs> that is. You have promised me such, and I would like to see it. How does one do... Is, is not one in the same? <laughs> I, yes. <laughs> I would like a double dose of either slide or glide. I see. Very well. I guess is what well, I'm trying to say. That's your responsibility in the team fights. <laughs> I will expect you. You're going to have to keep up with the speed at which he is moving, which I'm sure you will have no problem doing, Mr. Dracos. Now we see Vitality start to choke out G2 Esports. The vision is being invested into the enemy jungle. A lot of it is towards the top side of the map. Baron is not going to be spawning for a little while, but Vitality's only goal is to attack Wonder, continue to, to put pressure on him, because while G2 do have caps and he can hold his own against the likes of Cabo Shards, the same cannot be said for Wonder, who's yet to even complete his first item. And these are not champions on the side of G2 that lose gracefully. Once again, Wonder on this Camille, not a champion that wants to fall behind. It's a similar story for Lee Sin. Wonder is going to be able to make it out. Buffer there on the hookshot wall dive does mean even if a little bit of CC does connect, Camille will still get pulled to that wall. 
You can see Vitality doing the... Uh, I might not have time for that. G2 going for the yeah. fight. Now I'm going to try to maybe get on a Jack Troll, but has already used it. The Taunt now coming in. Caps on the backside. Attila has to be careful. Where's the slide? And Clyde needs to dash back, but Caps just has enough damage. Locks him down. Points and clicks him. Shuts him down. No movement for you, buddy. Take off those dancing shoes. Caps finds the kill. That's the shutdown as well, but Yusuke now looking to fire back. Self falls. Trying to set up for the rest of the team. Mowgli off to the side. Now moving in, though. Jack Troll taken down. Combo Shard is nowhere to be found. And G2 have found their opportunity to get back into this game. Mowgli now running for his life. Has the tunnel network to make it out to safety, but G2 are out for blood. Wonder continues the chase. Now the recall coming in. Cabo could be next on the menu, though. Could be in trouble. Oh, Wonder once more. He is not going to get the slow. He doesn't have the stun available. And G2, they find their first successful fight of the game. Three kills go on to Vitality. Shut down. Gold does get picked up for a number of G2 members. You can start to see the gold coming in. Caps. Actually going to complete the Rylai second as well. We'll talk a little bit about that later on. But let's have a look at how this team fight plays out for the side of G2. So we start off seeing that Vitality actually is pretty damaged initially. Yankos comes in from the flank from behind. And while he doesn't land the Q onto Jack Troll, the fact that the stopwatch comes through actually gets in the way of... Uh, allows Mickey to dive onto the back line, leaving Attila exposed. He doesn't have his flash due to using it earlier on. And that gives Caps free entryway onto the back line. Now, Jizuke, it looks like he's just going to clean up the fight here. But the shield... Plus the heal from Perks and Yankos is enough to find that kill. And then when you think Yankos is finally going to die, no, Wonder finally shows up and helps this jungler out to turn that into another kill. So, in this situation, it was just Vitality. They tried to push multiple lanes. They didn't have Cabochard available to join the fight. I believe his teleport was not available. And that meant that G2 could turn this into a 5 versus 4 and find themselves a big team fight win. And you saw the way Jizuki set that play up with the self fault, with three members kind of stacked on top of him. If Cabo had been there, there's no doubt in my mind that would have been a triple kill, but just very well played by the members of G2 to find that opening when Jarvan, the most fed member of the team, hands down, was not around and, uh, and exploit it. And now we have a game on our hands, Dan Andregos. The gold gap is 4,000. Vitality still heavily in control, but items are being completed. Cap's going for what I recently learned is known as the Doinby build. Oh. Uh, going for things like the Rylize provides a little bit more utility onto the Rise because it's so easy to get your orb to spread around in the team fights. You actually get provide a surprising amount of CC when everyone is grouped up and when you're in these 5v5 scenarios. Mainly relying on players like Perks to be the damage dealer, but also on Rise, you don't need that much AP to do a lot of damage, so I'm likely gonna find out. Cap's finishing in trouble here, uses the cleanse, but immediately gets locked up again. Here comes the Rexai Ultimate, Cap's trying to move his way out of it, and he's still alive! These are the clutch plays you want from Cap's, because Mowgli is next to the menu, he's now taken down. Jizuke has to run for his life. Flash available for Caps, he's waiting for it, he's moving. Jizuke gonna throw the claw back, Mickey getting lower and lower. They're taking their time on this one, they see the opportunity, they're gonna take him down as well! Caps on a rampage, what a beautiful series of play. And when the chips are down, it is Caps that comes up clutch. He was the one having a healthy laning phase. He, alongside Perks, were the still remaining carries available to turn this game around for G2 and Vitality. They tried to make a play towards the bot side, they think they can kill Caps, but this is the power of that Rylize plus uh, completed Archangel staff. You have the shield, you have all that extra HP. You can make sure that they cannot escape from you with all that extra utility. But if Mickey didn't show up, that might have ended in disaster. Regardless, Vitality. All right, good. Don't start the Baron. <laughs> they don't need to right now. Caps is very strong. Don't take that risk. And we wondered when we didn't see the Jarvan as the response in the early draft, to pick that Vitality so so much love, and we saw instead the Galley on the rise, how this will work out, and it's working out fantastically. Caps, an individual player, making a huge impact despite what was his team's deficit. And of, of course, the Galio as well, just everywhere it's needed to be in these plays, courtesy of that ultimate. Now the issue, Bettius, is that while one team does have a Callista, the other team does in fact have two mountains. Gonna make it much easier to contest this Baron, even though it is 22 minutes. G2 do have to give a lot of respect over to the potential for Vitality just to rush this one down. Right now their focus is on just getting deep vision up towards the top side of the map. You can see they pushed in mid. They have Jizuki on the bot side of the map because he does have his teleport available. He's going to clear that one out, lightly walk up and join the rest of his team. You can see right now G2's vision is scattered. They've got a lot of control wards in their inventory, but in order to get that, they need to gain priority in these lanes. And what's really stopping them right now is the fact that a lot of Outer Towers is still up and available for Vitality. That mid-tier one, that top tier one, the fact that those are still up means it's very difficult for G2 to actually get into the enemy jungle, so they can never gain control over the river. That means that with no control of the river, it's very hard for them to actually challenge this Baron, so they're constantly walking into darkness. 
Difficult spot. Luckily, they do have the luxury of red side, though. Easier to potentially jump into that pit for the steal, but Mowgli diligent in making sure none of that vision can exist. They, of course, spot Shizuka on the bottom side, Cabo Shard as well. This does free them up to at least alleviate some of the vision in their own jungle. They control their territory, but nothing else. None of the neutral territory of the river, as you mentioned, Vettius. But they do need to get a little bit of vision down here to stop this one from happening. The control ward in the pit, definitely going to be a pain. They have one of their own. The Vitality will need to take down if they want to contest here. But for now, Jizuke seems comfortable to keep moving down to the bottom side of the map. He, of course, has the TP, whereas Rise does not. Three items now finished for Attila. He has picked himself up that Phantom Dancer. This was recently changed, and it does give you a small shield now should you reduce, uh, should you drop to a certain percentage of health. So the survivability on Attila has increased. In the event that he uh, finds caps looking for a fight, he'll at least have that extra bit of survivability now. Vitality moving into the Baron Pit. Please don't start it. They've Never started mind. it. They've started it. All right, here we go. Baron play, classic Vitality. Let's see if they get the fight they want. They've got Mountain moving in for a bit more. Rise on the bottom side of the map to see an opportunity to get this one started. They're trying to delete Cabo Shard before the can even start. They delete the most dead member. Now Mowgli's in the middle of no one. Everyone is going to drop now. Jack Troll and Attila versus the world. Attila desperately trying to slide and glide his way out to safety, but now they're moving in. Attila cannot catch a break. G2 are collapsing in an instant. The Sonic Wave goes wide. They won't find anything else, but Vitality are routed in the pit. And G2 once again obliterate Vitality in the fight. What the one score! He finds the kill! Wonder getting payback after the early game that was in disaster. Now sitting at four and four. G2 after being at such a massive deficit prove to the world that they still sit on top. They will get themselves the Baron and Vitality. And and looking in dire straits. God, Betty, is the confidence coming in from Vitality. The overconfidence now as we see the play fall out. The bravado here. So Vitality are just using this Baron to start a fight. So they then turn onto the jungler, they want to execute him, but unfortunately the ultimate from the Rek'Sai comes out way too late, and Kamashad dies before the rest of the team can even follow up. This ends up being a two versus four to kick off the fight, which G2 are very easy to win. Then the teleport comes through from Lissandra. He ends up just TPing into the warm embrace of Caps, who says, hey, Jizuke, how you been? Why don't you go take a nap on the fountain while the rest of my team clean up? And the flash stun comes in from Wonder. He executes Attila, and he finds himself comfortably back into the game. Man trying to glide his way out of that play. Don't know if it's going to happen. V suddenly, it's a very, very even game, or would be. But Chichi now have a Baron buff, and that's going to make things much easier. Because you see 5 to 1 in towers, there's all this standing gold waiting to be picked up. And Yankos is sitting in Fog of War, waiting to move in and steal this one. Not going to go for it in the end. Besides, better of it, of course. Vitality's still strong in the fights, just not as strong in the, in the lane pressure. You'll see now. G2 will split up the map. Remember, we were talking about next steps for G2. They want to try and keep Vitality split apart. Fortunately for them, they managed to find a lot of these small skirmishes. Vitality never got to utilize this full 4v4 or 5v5 situation, and that's resulted in what this massive gold drop has been. But you've got to focus on Caps. He was the man that made it happen. He made the outplays. He turned these fights in favor of G2, and this is the star power that this man brings to any team that he plays on. Just fantastic. Living up to expectations there. Looking good across the board for G2. When we look back at that gold graph, I mean, it's like when your parents say, hey, if your friends jump off a cliff, would you do it? Vitality answered, yes. That cliff is that massive gold difference, Vedius. 2K now for G2. Coming out of what was a look, it looked like it was an impossible deficit to come back from. Yeah, I, was, I was convinced this game was completely over. Now they have this 3K Shelby power play and I think it gets a lot easier from here is the reality because Caps just keeps getting stronger. Now you talked about the Doinby build. We don't we don't see the righteous glory here. No, we don't, Instead, we, don't we see, see the death cap. We don't see the Leandries either. So Caps just gonna go for the Rylites for that extra bit of utility. Very cost efficient item as well. And now Wonders at a strong enough point where he can hold anyone he likes in a side lane. So let's not forget that at the beginning of the game, Wonder was two thousand gold behind Kawashard. Now he is ahead, ever so slightly. But he is in fact ahead and the fact that Wonders found a way back into this game speaks volumes to the experience that G2 do possess and that's why you can never afford to underestimate them as well and remember a win here will secure them first place at the end of the regular split. Kaba though maybe looking to find a play has to be careful though Cass once again has the cleanse has a lot of the tanky stats now gonna look to find the fight Cass flashing out to safety looks like they will just retreat but that is the hourglass now used from Cabo. Wonder continuing to push in on the top side. Pressure across all three lanes. Callista and Galio in the mid lane as well. One tower at least will fall. Wonder 
Going to shred through these towers with the power of that Trinity Force and the empowered Precision Protocol Brox on it. Yanko's now going to move in. Vitality being split up across the map. Yankos looks like he will be the sacrificial lamb. Caps now retreating to try to offer him a path out to save him, but Mowgli may have overstayed and may give up his life. But Jack Troll now stepping forward with the extra resistance that he has from the subjugate. Can stop him. Pillar behind him, trying to finish Caps off now. But in comes Mickey, ready to save the day. Coaling is going to fully connect onto Caps until it doesn't find his kill back. Now he's trying to slide and gun. Mickey may be next on the menu. It's all too easy. Vitality find it, but at what cost? Meanwhile, in the top lane, Wonder continues his assault on the Vitality base, and he will break at least one tower as Jazuke comes to contest. So, really good punish there from the side of Vitality, but they lose a lot of their base in exchange. They will, at the very least, keep G2 from securing any inhibitors, but very close regardless. This just goes to show that Yankos not having the best game of his career, definitely been punished for overstepping his boundaries, and in that one versus four, Unlike Alfari, Caps cannot survive. So he used the round walk to try and help Yankos. Unfortunately, he can't quite do anything to uh, jump into the pit. He does not have his flash available. Uh, and in this situation, Caps, remember that he doesn't have his flash because he got burned earlier, so they can go for this chase. Galio is available to use the ultimate. Caps still doesn't throw out the shield from his staffs. Uh, and until too late, unfortunately, there's more than enough damage coming out from Attila and Mowgli to help secure that one. So Vitality find themselves three quick kills while losing two tier three turrets in their base. And the gold may still be so close, but obviously the map very much in favor of G2. The thing I love about that play is the use of the pillar. You can see Mickey desperate. He's like, I want to jump in front of this coaling. I know if I can keep you alive that maybe we can turn this play. But the pillar stops him from doing so. And we can see the power of the Lucian on three and a half items now is going to continue to be a very big duelist threat as we move later into the game. It's all going to come down to if he can dodge any of those rise skill shots and if he can cleanse the rune prison at the right time. But on the opposite side, it's a similar story for perks. Three items and a QSS, as well as the stopwatch. So a lot of survivability on the respective AD carries. Cabo now going to start his assault on the bottom side of the map. Still a relatively strong Jarvan. The GA, though, pretty good. But honestly, in a lot of these situations, I would, I would sincerely prefer the Sterix, at least in the individual 1v1. Can you remind me, Dracos? So I know that building... Um Oh, what do you call it? The uh, Ardent Sensor on yep. uh, on Trundle is not that uncommon. It's actually something that you, we see a decent amount because he does have the ability to shield, but by running the Aftershock, he doesn't actually provide the shield, right? Because I feel like it used to be run with the Guardian. Uh, and then you I'm going to be honest it. with you, Vidius, right now. Uh, Audience, I'm gonna let you into a little caster secret. I have a computer in front of me and I'm gonna Google that because I don't know. That's like because I'm just I'm with, trying to think with Aerie, it's heal or shield, right? So, yeah. uh, but with aftershock, that as far as I recall, doesn't provide a shield. So I'm curious as to how Jack will actually procs the um, the Arden sensor in this situation. Mm. From the what? Okay, team. Anyway, oh, the brace. audience knows they will inform us in a second, but right now we've Targon's got to brace. talk. The Targon's Brace, of audience. course. Thank you, audience. You're way better than Law Wiki. so much Thank better you. than we are. Thank guys, you, guys. I'm going to be honest. So happy to have you here. I, obviously, you know, casters, we should know everything sourcing. about the it's game. It's crowdsourcing. But we miss things. And I appreciate those of you who cut us the slack, or in this case, shout at us till we get it. Shout out <laughs> to you, audience. You're wonderful. Now the Baron has been started. More important. Very tense. Vitality, they're committing to this. Jacob's going to try to move in, but this is very dangerous territory. If he wants to try to steal this one, they're Does immediately deleted. 3k dropping, that is the Baron moving over to Vitality. Now the fight is starting to turn. Caps is immediately deleted. The calling over the wall. He is taken down, Vitality. Moving forward for more. Perks now on the retreat. This might just be the end of the game. Vettius, Perks running for his life, but he just can't do it. The shutdown coming through in the face of righteous anger of Yamato Cannon there in the picture in picture is Vitality barrel down the mid lane. And the conviction of Vitality to commit to that objective. They saw G2 there, they were not afraid, they found the successful 5v5, and now they're grouping up, they're looking for the end, Dracos. Vitality barreling down, Wonder and Mickey X versus five, strong on the side of Vitality. Looks like the game is set to end, Wonder desperate to get this out, they're trying to shut down Attila, maybe they get a bit more time, they're buying more time, the knock-up coming oh. in, Wonder still alive, Did you get the retreat, Jack Joel's showing currently low, Cabo may try to save the day, but here comes Yankos as well. His chance to redeem this game's performance. They leap in, they may want to extend the play. The pillar is going to deny them from getting anything else, but G2 have held on. And he's still going. Wonder he's still on the chase. Look at the respawn timers coming through. Caps and Poke's going to be alive soon. No teleport available on Caps, though. No man on Jazuke either. Mickey chasing forward. He's still going. Slow down coming out. 
Ulti on Wonder still a long way away. Hookshot wall dive long enough to cool down. Jizuke on the retreat. He's and running away right now. Dianko's doing what he can. He has the flash. Not gonna choose to use it, but unbelievable. Two versus five. G2 keeps their base alive. Jizuke likely gonna lose his life as well. Oh. Vitality just cannot catch a break as G2 are unrelenting in giving this game away. And Benny, this is what you want to see when you look at names like this in a game, is these blow-for-blow -blow battles, these back-and-forth fights. No more of G2 just stomping a game or Vitality just rolling over someone in the early game. Back and forth is the name of the game at the top of the table. It is so close in this game. G2 now trying to find more purchase in the enemy base. Baron Buff still backing up Vitality, will only help them hold on. Going up against the Baron Buff Vitality right now. G2, they have all five members of their alive. And they're now sending three towards the bot side of the map. They've got to respect the potential flank engage from Cabochard. He has to teleport up. And G2 have set up no real vision across the map right now. So they're going to disengage, go back towards the mat in Drake. And Draco's this game is now starting to deliver. Both teams have taken swings at one another. Vitality had the early control. G2. We're able to find the bounce back, but with a convincing Baron, Vitality look to end the game. But some clutch plays from Wonder and Mickey keep the hopes of, Vi uh, of G2 alive. The Baron buff runs out in about 50 seconds. This game could still go either way. G2, they have the strongest sideline, they have the strongest skirmishing, but in the straight up 5v5, Vitality is just stronger. <laughs> Vettius, the gold is, it might as well be even. 1k difference at 35 minutes in the game, it's just, it just does not matter. The Drakes, of course, do. It will make it easier for Vitality to push in and try to burst that one down, but they are going up against Callista, so G2's Drake is just as threatening, especially as they have gotten their first mount into the game. I mean, we check in on items, and more and more are coming out. You see GAs on the top side of the map for Vitality. That's Mowgli and Cabochard. That will be important in the fights to come. Camille getting one herself is huge as well. Even Yankos now starting to catch up, getting closer to a GAA of his own, despite being put so far down in this game. And Caps, he does not need the Righteous Glory once again. He does not need the Leandris. He wants the Spellbinder. <laughs> he is going to find that one combo and on one damage, member. <laughs> <laughs> it also makes you speedy. On top of the uh, phase rush, I think it complements quite nicely. Regardless, he's forced to sit behind the river right now. He can't really approach. Vitality still have control over the map. They're going to secure an easy tier two towards the bot side as Vitality continue to extend the vision. The audience today has been fantastic and we have had a beautiful game five to help support them. Thank you guys for having such a great game yeah, with fantastic. us. Thank also, you thank you for all the, the Targon's information. Now oh, it's yeah. Redemption. Redemption, <laughs> redemption now also proxy. proxy. We got that one. We're not... <laughs> we're, we're smart, I swear. Uh, of course, shout out to, of course, the, the Origin fans, the bus coming in from Denmark, as well as the Portuguese fans, as well as the regulars. Yeah, you guys have been absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Uh, it makes it so much easier, speaking on behalf of play-by-plays, to, to shout at the top of your lungs <laughs> when you've got people doing it, too, in the background. Now, the Baron spawns in a minute, 30 seconds, guys. That's going to be the big timer that you want to keep your eyes on, as both these teams will look to want to secure it. Level 18s are being completed across the board. The big solo laners for G2. Jizuka actually only sitting at 16 right now. Definitely about to get Flame Horizoned by Caps, who spent the majority of the game sitting in a side lane, finding a lot of the kills for G2. Perks getting close to that level as well. But level 18 is a really big point, because once everyone reaches that point, that's kind of where gold doesn't matter anymore. It's not really a factor. Everyone is at the point where you can't really get any stronger, and it all comes down to execution. And what better way to end game five of week eight, a spot for first place on the line, than simply really good League of Legends players playing the best possible League of Legends against one another. Fantastic. And, and taking the risks that make these games feel alive. Not playing slow, looking for the opportunities, taking the risks, looking for the individual one-on-one -on -one outplays. And Bettius, we're looking at arenas coming through. As the inhibitors start to respawn, as items start to come through, Baron in 23 seconds, Elder Drake in two. Both of those pits are going to be massive points of contention. Huge opportunities for these teams to full on 5v5. And as you said, it's going to be all about that execution. And Vitality, they're, they're primed and ready for the team fight. Triple GA coming out. Zonya's completed as well for Jizuke. G2, even if they kill Vitality once, they're just going to come back and you're going to have to kill them again. The resilience of Vitality has to be respected. Deserving of the current second place standings. Perks right now. 
a very strong Callista. Currently sitting on the stopwatch, has a, uh, his own survivability. And now we're just looking at that Baron. Vision is in favor of G2. They've gained the mid-priority. They haven't sweeped anything out yet, so there are a couple of wards littered across the river. And it looks like G2 will be forced to disengage. These controls that they've just set down, they're going to lose very quickly. But look at the bot side of the map. You can see Caps hanging around. Doesn't have the teleport, but both Jizuke and Kabushar do. So if he makes his presence known, Vitality can immediately force. And fun fact, that's exactly what they're going to do. They have the double mountain. They can tear through this one so quickly. 10k and dropping. Perks can't get in there to get enough spears. Look at the bot lane, though, and give it a drop. It's going to be huge. Caps is now moved down to the bot lane. Mickey, they're trying to buy more time. Wonder and Caps, they're moving around the outside, but it's going to come down to who gets the Baron, but it's Rek'Sai who takes it to the end. Kabo and Jizuke are now in power. They can look to try to take this fight, but they're moving in. They're trying to use the burst damage there. Perks, though, trying to go through the health bar of Attila. Yanko's now coming to try to peel him off. It's all on Attila to try to find this one out. Meanwhile, on the bottom side of the screen, we do see the inhibitor going down. Resurrection coming in. That's going to be Attila's death sentence as he immediately gets knocked up and taken out. G2 taking the edge despite losing the Baron. Vitality secured the Baron and will keep their base alive, but G2, they do not relent on the pressure. They find two very big kills onto both Attila and Jackdraw. They secure two inhibitors as well, and now look at those death timers. 40 seconds on Attila. G2 are grouping up in mid. Can Vitality hold the line? G2 have made the impossible hold. Can Vitality do it as well? The TP now coming in to bolster their efforts. Round wolfing the minions behind minions. the line. They're going they to take it. Vitality need to find the fight here. Kabo immediately jumping into the whole team. Yanko's keeping his focus there. Wonder on the backside. G2 moving in. Looking to take to the right side. He goes in. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. That could be it. Kabo going to fall. The GA coming through. But that's just lining them up for the setup. Lining them up for the final kill. 14 seconds on Attila. Mowgli now running for his life. Uses the tunnel to make it out of safety. But now they've got the hunt for blood. They're taking down Mowgli. No one will survive in this game. G2 are determined. Attila about to respawn. Kabushard still alive. Can Vitality do it? Everything holds on Attila. Flash forward. Everyone is in the pit. They're fighting for their lives. Attila is still alive on the back side. So the coming out. The tower is still alive. The Nexus is not exposed. Perks death ridiculous. Oh, Perks! Attila will not forgive. But G2 are here to find the win. G2 lock first place. Beautiful game to round out week eight. Such a clutch team fight at the very end. Oh my word. 18 kills to 21. 78K gold to 77. That was some crazy League of Legends. But G2, they come out on top and they do secure first place in the LEC Spring Sprint regular season. A fantastic game. That is, I have to just echo it, absolutely delivering. It's our final game of week eight. I'm surprised I, you can still breathe, man. You're losing it at the end. I'm literally <laughs> shaking. I had to mute myself. I'm literally shaking. It's incredible. <laughs> these team fights, it's impossible to track the minutia of mechanical decisions that went into making some of these wonderful outplays possible. And a game balance on the knife edge. Even when Vitality are to man disadvantage, facing down five members, leaping to kill them, to take their nexus. Still, still we see a close, contentious fight. I do hope we get a replay of that final team fight. It was, it was absolutely insane. Both teams just playing to the max. Just goes to show Vitality, they can challenge the best. There were just a couple of misplays there. That game was firmly in their grasp. They came so close so many times. And I was worried for playoffs. <laughs> when we saw G2 at the start of the split, I was like, oh man, they're just gonna, they're gonna like 6-0 and it's gonna <laughs> now I'm like, give me five games of that. <laughs> like, let me see what OG can do too. Like, let's get this go. I mean, it's so hard. I know we have a week left, but I just want to be playoffs <laughs> already, man. Lock it in. I don't care. Let's get it going. Oh, man. Oh, such a great game. Oh, so exciting. Love that game. Loved it so I, much. Just individual fact, stepping up. Like, let's take a, a, so much has happened. It's almost impossible to remember how that game is. Remember that Vitality started that game with such a huge lead. They wonder was not a champion for the first like 20 <laughs> minutes of that game. Yeah. Camille was utterly useless. But the fact that they came back and the Wonder ended up being the deciding factor to hold on to the Nexus, to leap straight past every other Vitality member and kick Attila in the face, yep. that was crazy. I mean, a part of me kind of thinks that at the end of the day it was like, because it's hard, right? Because Caps is what ultimately kept G2 in the game for the vast majority of it. It was Caps that even allowed them to have that comeback at all. Um, but then the actual moment that decided the fact that G2 wouldn't lose 
was Wonder and Mickey together. So maybe it's Mickey. Maybe Mickey's the standout hero. The ultimate's all over the board. I'm oh, not going to weigh in this time around, audience. As we close out the week, there's, of course, only really one question remaining, and that is, who is the key player of the game for G2 versus Vitality? Is it Caps? Is it Perks? Is it Mickey? Ah, you can head Wanda's over to not even Sports. He did... Get I mean, I understand. I understand. I, I think it's fine. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cat, definitely take Mickey into consideration. Perks was also very, very solid in this game. He didn't actually die until that fight that nearly lost them a game. So, like, very good performance. Much better compared to his old Callista uh, from back in the day. Uh, but honestly, really great game. Thank you so much, both those teams. First versus second, it definitely delivered. Absolutely did. But for more on G2's win, let's head over to Frankie and their AD carry. I have the absolute pleasure, Perks, of revealing to you that with that win, you have secured your place as the number one seed and you're going directly to Rotterdam. How does that feel? Uh, it, feels, it feels great. Uh, yeah, I haven't been rank one in regular season for two years now, I think. Yeah, it's been a very long time. So actually, so solidifying us as a first place makes makes us kind of feel uh, safe for now, right? And we get, we get to have some like, more relaxed time, but other things are really sweating right now to make playoffs or make top two, right? So we can like, reset our mind and make sure that we go into playoffs fully prepared. But you, were you a bit nervous about this match against Vitality? Because we knew it was going to be close and you didn't have the best day yesterday. Uh, well, yeah, our performance right now is not that great, honestly. Yeah, we kind of suck, but uh, we... We did manage to like pick up our slack and actually win the game because I feel like yesterday we could have also won the game, but it was like a lot, a lot harder. And this game we had like at least some late game security, right? In like uh, Camille and uh, Rice. So making sure that we actually do win, even though we like suck in early game, is a good feeling, right? Because everyone, everyone says G2 sucks late game, they're so good early game. So now we suck early game. <laughs> but yeah. But the, the thing is, though, you say you were nervous going into this, but you went for that Callista pick, and we were talking before we went live. That's very unusual for someone who's only been doing three months in the ADC shift. Oh, oh no, I, I'm not really nervous. I, I'm really confident every game I play. I feel like that my landing phase goes very smooth every time, and uh, I kind of know what's going what's to happen. Sometimes we don't have the most practice, and then I don't feel as confident, but today I felt really confident we got what we, what we wanted, and I even played against Vitality Bottom yesterday in solo queue in like Lucian versus Kalista matchup, so I felt very confident in this game. <laughs> I really want to talk about the decision making there as well, because Vitality, they go for the third Baron, they win it, and meanwhile, a couple of you guys are over in their base, securing the game. Who made that decision? Uh, well, it was like, it was Wunder and Cups, like both of them, they were just like dis discussing in game. It's like problem solving in game when the game is hard. And they said, well, let's just Vitality the Vitality, and then we <laughs> Vitality the Vitality. Uh, and uh, yeah, I was really triggered up within game because I almost lost the game alone. Because I thought maybe I can sneak Drake, but they just went Nash and they got Nash. And then I thought they would end the game. So that was like a rough moment for me in the game, but at least my team salvaged it and then we got the back door. Well, Perks, thank you so much for talking to me and thank you for that game. I think that thank was the most thrilling me. game I saw all of this weekend. It was my pleasure, Perks. And LEC, it was my pleasure to be here this weekend. Thank you so much. Let's head to the post-game lobby.